his moment of opportunity when he said it's convenient I will call you no convenient time ever came we have also the Apostle Paul standing before King Agrippa notice Acts chapter 26 and verses 27 and 28 Acts chapter 26 and verses 27 and 28 once again the Apostle Paul has preached a powerful sermon about receiving Jesus Christ and preparing for the judgment and I want you to notice what happens when he finishes his sermon it says there in Acts chapter 26 and verse 27 and 28 King Agrippa do you believe the prophets I know that you do believe then Agrippa said to Paul you almost persuade me to become a Christian sad tragic words so Paul preached these powerful sermons before Felix before Agrippa Felix says I will call you at a convenient season he puts it off Agrippa says you know what you're saying is very persuasive and powerful you almost persuade me to become a Christian but not quite the seed fell on the path the seed fell by the wayside it did not even begin to germinate in the heart these types of hearers are also illustrated by those who stoned Stephen the first Christian martyr go with me to the book of Acts chapter 7 Acts chapter 7 by the way this whole chapter almost is a sermon presented by Stephen to the Jewish Sanhedrin to the Jewish council and I want you to notice what happens after the sermon is preached chapter 7 and starting with verse 54 it says when they heard these things they were cut to the heart and they gnashed at him with their teeth they were really angry weren't they but he being full of the Holy Spirit gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God and said look I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God then they cried out with a loud voice stopped their ears and ran at him with one accord and they cast him out of the city and stoned him and the witnesses laid down their clothes at the feet of a young man named Saul gnashing their teeth their hearts raging within them rejecting this wonderful sermon that Stephen had preached beginning way back in the Old Testament and showing how prophecy was fulfilled and eventually the Messiah came they openly rejected the message that God presented through Stephen by the way in the end time there are going to be people like this also in fact all of those who receive the message of the Antichrist will eventually be people of this type notice 2nd Thessalonians chapter 2 2nd Thessalonians chapter 2 and I would like to read a few verses that we find there beginning with verse 8 it says there and then the lawless one will be revealed that's the Antichrist by the way whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming the coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan with all power signs and lying wonders and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish and now notice why they perish because they did not receive what the love of the truth that they might be saved and by the way what is truth Jesus said in John 17 verse 17 sanctify them through your truth your word is truth so what is rejected if they did not receive the love of the truth they rejected truth which is found where in the Holy Bible and notice what we find in verse 11 and for this reason God will send them a strong delusion that they should believe what the lie that they all may be condemned who did not believe what the truth but had pleasure 
in unrighteousness. It is a serious thing to have the Word of God preached and presented to you. And the first type of soil represents those who hear the Word, but immediately when it comes, they shut out the Word. The Word does not even begin to germinate. And as a result, take, Satan takes the truth from the heart. And those who have this kind of soil are lost. But we have a second kind of soil. It's the soil on stony ground. Go with me to the Gospel of Luke chapter 8 and verse 6. The Gospel of Luke chapter 8 and verse 6. Here we have a description of this kind of soil. It says there the following. Some fell on rock and as soon as it sprang up, it withered away because it lacked what? Moisture. Now I want you to visualize that what's happening here, there is rock but there's also some good soil. Because the seed germinates and it begins to grow. Isn't that right? You notice that this seed, this soil is different than the first soil. Because the first soil, even before the seed germinates, the devil comes and he takes it from the heart. But here, at least, the seed begins its process of growth. There is some soil there. But we noticed in Luke chapter 8 that the soil lacks what? It lacks moisture. And by the way, it's stony. It's rocky. There's not pure soil. There's also stone with the soil. By the way, as we read this in Matthew 13, it gives us an additional detail. Notice Matthew 13, verses 5 and 6. Matthew chapter 13, and verses 5 and 6. It says here, Some fell on stony places, where they did not have much what? Much earth. And they immediately sprang up, because they had no depth of earth. But notice, but when the sun was up, they were scorched. And because they had no root, they what? They withered away. Now notice the combination that we have here. We have soil, which is not only soil, but you have rock in the soil. You have soil that does not have moisture. And you have the sun that beats down upon the soil and scorches the seed, scorches the newborn plant. Now you imagine some of you living here in the valley, I, may, I imagine have gardens, what would happen if you plant a seed and it has just a little good soil and it has stone underneath that and so you plant the seed superficially, there's no moisture hardly in the earth and the sun, that Fresno sun, 110 degrees in July, you know about that, is beating down upon the seed. How much of an opportunity does that seed have to germinate and grow and eventually produce fruit? Very, very little. Now what does the seed planted on stony ground represent? Well, it represents those individuals who, when the gospel is preached to them, they are filled with excitement and with emotion. The seed is planted in the heart, and they, they say, this is wonderful. I've never heard anything like it in my life. And they get all enthused. But then trials and tribulations come. You see, one of the problems that people have is that they think that when they accept the gospel, it's going to cure all of their problems. They're not going to have temptations or difficulties or tribulations anymore. The fact is, folks, that our greatest tribulations come after our baptism. The greatest tests of the devil come after we've decided to give our hearts to Jesus Christ. I see many of you nodding and saying, yes, that's absolutely true. Because the devil has lost a child. And he's going to make it as difficult as possible to try and gain that child back. But there are people that when the gospel is preached, when we have a series of meetings like this, they're all pumped up and they're really excited. And then they have problems with their families, they have problems with their relatives, they have problems at work, they have all sorts of difficulties. Perhaps they continue having problems with some of the habits that they had and they get discouraged. And as a result, they fall by the wayside.